Ayan. Cool. All right. Um, so let's get into it. Um, first, let's go through an overview of the strategies, um, and later we'll go into this thing called media queries. Um, so today's example is this kind of very basic um, HTML and CSS. Um, you guys might have, oh, is it sharing properly? Okay. Um, so this is kind of a very basic HTML layout. Um, yeah, does anyone have any ideas on any different HTML we're using here or any CSS that we're using here? Just any like tag names or any like different types of ways that we style things that you guys notice? Does anyone remember how we do this horizontal thing with the restaurants and coffee shops? Just the name of it? Flexbox, yeah. Um, so one thing that we're using here is Flexbox for these two. Um, we also have a whole bunch of different tags. We have H1 tags for the Berkeley Food Guide. We have some A tags to represent the links. Um, yeah, does anyone have any questions on the layout here? Great. Um, so first, before we get into this, let's think about what responsive design is. Um, so responsive layouts are is the idea of making a website look good on many different types of screens and sizes of screens. Um, so for example, one of the extreme things that you guys are definitely familiar with is the difference between a website on like your laptop and like a website on your phone screen. So a phone is very narrow um, and very long, whereas a laptop is more wide than it is tall. Um, so we kind of can evaluate based on that and um, uh, make our design look good in both of those formats. Um, so let's think of what's some ways that um, we can actually accomplish this responsive layout um, using CSS. Um, so the first strategy that we're going to talk about is using percents. Um, so percents is a is something that you guys are familiar with. It just scales it to the percentage of the parent container. Um, and so when we set the width to be fifty percent, here the the um, on like a laptop type of screen, the middle section is going to take up fifty percent of the screen in width, but it's going to do the same thing in a phone. Um, so again, 50% of the screen is going to be used um, for this middle white area. Um, but you might notice that this kind of um, makes it look weird. The links are supposed to be three on one line, but here we have two lines, um, two on one top line and then another like kind of wrapped around. Um, and so you can see that like, Yes, this works, but maybe it doesn't look the best and we have better solutions out there. Um, so let's take a look at strategy number two. Strategy number two is to use max width. So the element will try to be as wide as it can be. Um, and this is very, very nice for making things very simple. Um, so our max width here is 500 pixels. So on a laptop screen, um, you'll see that this is a 500 pixel um, sized box. Um, but when we resize the screen down and make it super small, it's still gonna like shrink with the size, um, but it's not gonna like shrink as much. So um, it'll stay to be 500 pixels wide up until it needs to shrink. Um, yeah, does anyone have questions on how that works? I can give another explanation if people would like. Yeah, OK. Um, so just, just to quickly reiterate that then. Um, so initially, our white box here is 500 pixels. And as we slowly um, resize the screen, you might know this as um, 
like pulling the side of uh, your window in. Um, as we do that, the size of this box won't change until there's no more edge to remove. Um, so it'll stay the same size up until it absolutely cannot. Yeah. Does everyone kind of understand where that is coming from? Okay, cool. Um, so here's a problem. Um, we want the sections to break to the next line instead of um, have them kind of like squished together next to each other. Um, so, I mean, there's, we have these currently in a flex box with restaurants and coffee shops right next to each other. Um, so let's think of some ways that we might want to do this. Um, and that brings about strategy number three, which is flex wrap. So flex wrap is saying that um, as we shrink the screen super, super small, um, we're going to try and wrap this flex box and put it below it, um, which is kind of unintuitive, but um, we decrease the number of items per row in a layout as we shrink the screen. Um, so you can see we go from two columns to just going to one column because we don't have enough space. Does that make sense? Okay, great. Yeah. The div of the restaurants and coffee shops. So um, we want these two items to be wrapping if, it, if there's not enough space. Um, and the way to do that is to set flex wrap for the parent container of them both. Great question. Any other questions? Okay, great. Um, so let's talk about strategy number four. Um, and this one is a little bit more complicated um, and very involved, but we also have media queries. Um, so the basic idea behind this is to write CSS for different screen sizes. So um, maybe a certain CSS will work better on a laptop, but it won't work on a mobile interface at all. So we can set these breakpoints to specify screen widths um, that use different CSS. Um, so yeah, this can be anything, but usually it's used to, disting to distinguish between laptops, tablets, and phones. Um, yeah, just as, a, as some quick kind of guidelines for this, um, 0 to 480 can be used for phones, 481 to 768 is for like tablets, maybe larger smartphones, or like landscape version of uh, smartphones. 769 to 1279 is for like laptops and larger tablets in landscape mode, um, and also like some small monitors. Um, and then 1280 and above is for larger desktops and monitors. So that's like as big as it gets. Uh, so yeah, that was kind of an introduction into media queries, but we can um, learn a little bit more so we can design we can design how our document is being presented across different like types of media. Here is most likely going to be um, a laptop versus a phone screen. Um, so you might notice that one of them is a lot wider, and we have three different columns and um, different tabs to select things. Um, but in our mobile interface, it's much more compact. Um, and we shrink everything down into um, a much more fitting format. Any questions on why we would want to have our mobile interface look different? Okay, great. So let's get into using media queries. Um, so we use this in the HTML head to um, kind of tell us about the, the viewport of the screen. Um, so the viewport meta tag tells the browser that the width of the screen should be considered the full width of the page. Um, so like, yeah, our a device width is going to be the initial like full screen, um, which is why we call it the initial scale of one. Um, so width equals device width part 
sets the width of the page to follow the screen width of the device. Um, so that's your entire screen, your whole window. Um, and the initial scale of 1.0 sets the initial zoom level. So um, initially, we don't want anything to be zoomed in. Um, yeah, if the screen is 320 pixels wide, um, we want the browser window to be 320 pixels wide rather than like super zoomed out. Um, yeah. And so where can we place these media queries? Um, yeah, our media queries are inside of CSS. Um, because we're modifying CSS to look different at different screen widths, um, we want to have them uh, apply at different scenarios in our CSS. Um, so it has a special syntax. It has this at media symbol. Um, so it's like our animations that we learned last week. Um, but it's a little bit different um, from what we're used to. Um, so just to kind of go over the syntax of this, um, we have this at media symbol telling us that this is a media query. And then we set like our max width that um, this applies to. So um, if our screen is less than 600 pixels, this media query will activate, if that makes sense. Um, and then inside of that, we have some CSS. So here we're affecting the HTML tag, um, basically our entire document. Um, and we set our font size equal to 14 pixels when initially we had it at 16. Does anyone have questions on how that works? Okay, great. So yeah, this is basically just CSS with some extra steps. Um, yeah, just as I was explaining, this is this media query is trying to say that for screens that have a width of less than 375 pixels, we want to use these specific CSS properties on top of the ones that we have before. So can tell anyone tell me what um, what screen sizes the first media query affects. Like what range of screen sizes. Yeah, uh, you can just give the like specific numbers if you want. So like, if our max width is 600 pixels, is it going to affect everything below 600 pixels or everything above 600 pixels? Yeah, so our first media query here, this top one, is going to affect any um, screens that are 599 pixels or anywhere down up to zero pixels. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, great. So yeah, let's say we want to make we want to match the all computer screens that are no larger than 600 pixels. We can say screen and max width of 600 pixels. And what about if we want it to be 200 to 400 pixels? Um, we can do screen and min width of 200 pixels and max width of 400 pixels. So we can define a specific range. Does anyone have questions on that? Cool. Um, so we can go ahead and take a look at this demo. So we have a whole bunch of code here. Um, let me see if I can look at this. Um, but um, we want to make some media queries that our nav um, will display on the desktop, um, but it will, or it will display on the, um, on mobile, um, but not on, so, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, so we have two different types of um, navs here. I believe we have our nav desktop and we have our nav mobile. Um, and so we want to have it so that our nav desktop displays on 
um, desktops and uh, our nav mobile to display on mobiles. Does anyone have any ideas on how we might do that? No worries if you don't fully get it yet. But we can just kind of like think about what we're doing here um, kind of conceptually, because I think the the actual demonstration of this is a little bit difficult to pull off well. Um, basically, we want to have our desktop nav, this nav bar to display when our uh, screen size is above a certain size. And we want to show the mobile when we reach a certain width, like when we go under a certain width. Um, so does everyone kind of understand where a media query would come in there? Great. OK, um, so if we want to have the change happen at 700 pixels, how might we set up our two media queries, one for setting mobile to be on and desktop to be off and the other for desktop to be on and mobile to be off. Mm -hmm. um, could you make one uh, where you have a definition and it's like the, the default, you could say it's like it defaults to be the desktop design. Mm -hmm. And then you write another one that only activates uh, for max width for this, uh, whatever you want. Right. Whatever. Yeah. So that's pretty perfect. Um, yeah, we want to set one of our me media queries to be a max width of 700 pixels. Um, so that means that will affect anything that is below 700 pixels, um, which I guess 700 pixels is about where we want to cut off for mobile devices. Um, so we have one that sets max width to 700 pixels, and inside of that, we'll activate our mobile display and we'll deactivate our desktop display. Does that make sense to everyone on how that's functioning? Basically, this will turn on and this will turn off. Okay. Um, and then we have one other media query here, um, one for min width being 700 pixels. Um, and when we set min width equal to 700 pixels, we want to go back to our desktop display. So we set our desktop to be active and our mobile to be deactivated. Yeah. Um, I believe that the media query affects it and then doesn't change it back once it's deactivated. So if we go down to 699 pixels, um, it'll activate the mobile display, um, but then going above doesn't deactivate it. So our then we would have no display. Perfect. Does everyone kind of understand what we're getting at here? It's a little bit hard to demonstrate. Yeah. Um, so for those um, two display modes, um, is it okay to set both of them to 700 or will it like uh, kind of freak out that you're at exactly 700? At the edge like case? 700 and 701? Um, I believe it's okay. It'll just kind of be like, it won't, be exactly what you want, maybe. Um, but because it's just one pixel that's being affected by the edge case, um, it won't affect too much. You'll maybe have it activate one pixel early or deactivate one pixel early, but it doesn't matter too much. Any other questions? That's a great question, by the way. Yeah. Media queries can definitely be complicated, and these slides went very quickly. So um, feel free to ask more questions. I'm going to exit out of this real quick. Um, so, sorry, one second. Yeah, if there's any questions, 
I can go back to any slides. I know it went really quickly. Um, if you want me to go over the four different strategies that we have, I can do that one more time. Cool. All right. 